curses. We won't accept that. We make a claim for righteousness in the genealogical claim, both genealogy and righteousness. But later on, when you get to Jesus and Christianity, what book in the Christian Bible starts playing games with Jesus as high priest? Hebrews? Not surprising is the letter to the Hebrews. Because this is what Hebrews would be interested in. And what's the claim, the famous claim, in Christianity for Jesus' priesthood? A priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Or as some of you might have heard it said in a sermon, Melchizedek. Yes, but you shouldn't do those pronunciations. You get the right one, because then the word comes out not. Melchi said it. There we go again. ZDK. Another variation on the Zadokite priest line. This is a priesthood after the order of Melchi, Rock King, Sedic Righteousness. Righteous King. So it has several implications or connotations or plays. And where does Hebrews get that from? I think uh, Abraham, I think it's Abraham, was it? Is it meets the king of Salem. And he comes and greets Abraham, was it? And he says, you know, uh, I forget, you are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. I forget that whole where, where, but it's a, it's a, I think it's in the book of Genesis. Is it in the book of Genesis? I think so. It's, it isn't David. I don't think it's David. No, I, I think it's Abraham. It's in the book of Genesis, a weird story in the book of Genesis. They love to take things out of context and play games off them. Never mind. Okay. So now, let's go back here. So, I don't know. remember the word you were worried about. Quizzling. Quizzling's a good word, I think. That would be okay, but that's traitor. There's another one more like um, accommodating, I think is the word. Accommodating. Accommodating satisfies. We accommodate ourselves to your power. Okay. So now, I, Daniel, was deeply disturbed by the visions that were passing through my head, so I approached one of those who were standing by and asked him to tell me the truth about all this. Who is Daniel approaching to interpret his vision? Who's having the vision in the first place, by the way? Daniel. Daniel is having visions in the night. Right? He is not interpreting the visions in the night. Who is interpreting the visions in the night? Someone standing nearby, like the standing angel in uh, Jesus' tomb. The tomb was empty and two angels, or one gospel has one angel standing there. He has gone before you to Galilee or something like that. These people are always standing by. Well, if you look in chapter 8, we have this man identified. Because I'm sure it's the same man, line 15 of chapter 8. As I, Daniel, gazed at the vision and tried to understand it, I saw someone standing before me. Again, he looked like a man, but he had the appearance of a man, or a human, if your Bible says it. But he wasn't a man. This is definitely an angel. And what angel is it? I heard a voice cry over the Ulai, whatever that, I guess some river. Gabriel, tell me the meaning of my vision. And then Gabriel interprets the meaning of the vision. So now here we can tell the Muslims they got things wrong. Sorry, boys. Oh my God, if I don't say this, I got you know, my head will be rolling on the ground over here or something like that. <laughs> I've got to watch out, I'll have myself decapitated or something like that. You don't like to scent, you know. They have a strange way of. Uh, of the reaction to the sense. Just kill the dissenter. <laughs> That's an easy way, isn't it? I'm old enough, doesn't matter anymore. But uh, the point, hey, I lived in Long Island. I was 35 on my own. 
But um, the point is, who do the Muslims think can say Gabriel is? This is how they get around the whole thing about the Quran. The Quran is God given because Gabriel for them is the angel of revelation. He reveals the Quran. Another point Muhammad calls, sometimes calls it the Holy Spirit, sometimes he calls it the angel Gabriel, who is talking to him or giving him the visions. This is what Muslims believe. Fair enough, most people believe Muslims. Believe Muslims. But the point is, where did they get this angel from? Right here. They don't know it. If you ask them, where did you get Gabriel from? Oh, he, he uh, taught the Quran to Muhammad. He revealed the Quran. Yeah, but where, where did he come from? How do you know he's from? We don't know. We don't do history before Muhammad. Well, you can tell him it's from chapter 8 of the book of Daniel, okay? And he's not a revelationary angel. What kind of angel is he? An interpreting angel. He interprets the revelation. He doesn't give the revelation. So again, a little bit of confusion on the way to a new religion. <laughs> Daniel, you see, a lot of trouble comes out of Daniel, right? A lot of trouble. That's why it's an interesting book. I'm wasting a lot of time on it. I hope you don't mind. But it is interesting, I think. And hopefully you won't forget these things when you uh, come to having the, uh, the chance to put someone down. <laughs> because you can, then you can always, that, that really infuriate. Then you can show you, you know more than they know? Oh, God, you really get angry. You say, well, that chap, you know, chapter 8, Daniel, line 17, gave us the first appearance of Gabriel in literature. The first appearance of Gabriel in literature. That's where you guys got it from. Another sort of uh, takeover. Accurately or inaccurately. This is dangerous stuff when you uh, transmute into other civilizations. So, uh, okay, so now he becomes a revelationary angel of the whole Quran. Okay, cool. But here, you know, Gabriel was only, uh, as far as we knew, supposed to interpret visions, not give visions. Because that's how they get around the fact that Muhammad can't be a mistake. You know what they, why they wanted to execute Salman Rushdie? Because he portrayed the prophet as making errors and that the Gabriel told him stuff but he forgot it and, and then he, he couldn't remember what he was told so he got it all confused. This is in his novel. And then, then they pronounced the death sentence on him. 